good afternoon children and welcome back today we are starting a new chapter biomolecules right now anyone can say what is this biomolecules what are these biomolecules all about yes oh okay otherwise i can ask you what are we made up of and you may be saying or you might be saying we are made up of uh, blood bone so and so you can say or you may be saying we are made up of cells right again what are cells made up of yeah again you may give the answer as cell wall or cell membrane and other different components of the cell correct okay so what is this cell wall made up of yes it is cellulose and what is cell membrane made up of yes it is made up of lipids and proteins yes ah so and what is this uh, cytoplasm made up, made up of it is it has many many uh, chemicals dissolved organic inorganic uh, components uh, dissolved in it right okay so we can finally say we can finally conclude that we are made up of these chemical substances okay or we can these because these constitute the living world living system we are living organisms right they are called as bio molecules or bio macro molecules also you can say macro molecules because they have very big, they, are, they come in big big sizes of a greater weight okay now so these bio molecules are chemical compounds found in living organisms and they include organic and inorganic what do you mean by organic children yes yeah they are, they are these organic compounds are made up of carbon hydrogen oxygen mainly and with uh, proteins containing nitrogen uh, sorry uh, uh, and sulfur and etc right so inorganic substances means calcium magnesium phosphorus phosphorus all those things are inorganic materials right okay now how to analyze the chemical composition of our each and every cell of our or our body suppose you take a living tissue a, any plant tissue or animal tissue anything right and you have to grind it in using trichloroacetic acid trichloroacetic acid in a mortar and pestle okay right and what you should do after uh, making this uh, uh, to, to we do get a thick slurry there slurry means a paste like thing right and you strain it through a cheese cloth or cotton cloth okay so the substances which dissolve in this trichloroacetic acid will pass through this cotton cloth or cheese cloth and come down right okay so so it, we get two kinds of two kinds of things which is one is the filtrate that is which is the acid soluble pool which which we get separately which we get filtered right and the acid insoluble fraction which is the retinate the filtrate and the retinate okay now the filtrate when it is analyzed for bio micro molecules or macro molecules we get so many kinds of many 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 kinds of macro molecules okay and we just present in the acid soluble pool children which uh, whose molecular weight is less than 1000 delta that only will dissolve in the trichloroacetic acid and pass through the cheese cloth okay so uh, in this itself in this filtrate itself you get hundreds and hundreds of components or micro uh, bio micro molecules or macro molecules of course right uh, and this retinate contains the substances which have molecular weight greater than 1000 daltons okay right so it represent the cytoplasmic composition it contains the molecules from cytoplasm as well as the nucleus and other content everything because uh, okay i'll go through the next okay now how will you analyze for inorganic components in a living organisms that is when a living tissue 
you take a uh, living tissue and weigh it so you take the weight and uh, dry it okay by drying it in the sun you can dry it you can, it may take some time but dry it and the remaining dry weight is burnt to oxidize all the carbon components all the carbon components to gaseous form carbon dioxide and water vapor that is when you burn a living tissue dry it and burn it uh, all the uh, carbon compounds uh, will become into evaporate into co2 and water vapor okay the remaining ash the ash what is left behind is ash right and it contains calcium magnesium phosphorus sulfate etc okay right this is a comparison of elements in the non living and the living matter which is uh, which is the earth's crust and the human body so this is just a, a just to go through it's not very important it's just a comparison of the different materials or different elements okay just go through that now we'll see what all things are present in the acid soluble pool which is the filtrate right so it contains molecules less than 1000 dalton okay so this because of them because of this weight dif differences uh, we call this as uh, them as bio micromolecules children okay right now which are these bio micromolecules present in the filtrate they are the amino acids lipids sugars sugars means carbohydrates okay uh, carbohydrates itself is a very big complex uh, substances starch including starch glycogen what not is there okay right and also nitrogen bases where do you find nitrogen is bases children you remember yeah it is present in the rna and dna okay first we'll see the amino acids each of these we one by one we have to see so we first we'll see amino acids right so as the name says amino acid so a typical amino acid is formed of an amino group and an acid group amino group means nh2 group okay an acid is ooh i don't know whether your chemistry teacher has started organic chemistry if you if you if, if she started you may know better if i say all these things right so it contains an amino group NH2 group and then acid COOH and a H group and a variable group. H group is a cons I mean it is common. The R group may vary accordingly different in different different uh, amino acids. Okay and you should know that there are nearly 20 amino acids necessary for our body. From where do we get our, our amino acid children? We get it from our food right okay so these which are which we get from the food items is called as the essential amino acids clear okay and nh2 that is variable group is r so what is the uh, what is it what is an amino acid children it is made up of an amino group an acid group a h group and a variable r group okay now nh2 and cooh are attached to the same carbon only one carbon is there and it attached to the same carbon which is called as the alpha carbon therefore they are called as alpha amino acid only one carbon so they are and all the other uh, side groups are attached to the this one c and it is called as alpha amino acids right okay now this h this r group if it is uh, it is a uh, it becomes H in the case of glycine. It's one of the amino acids. These are the names of different amino acids. Okay, for glycine amino acid contains a H in the case in the in the place of R. Okay, and in alanine, it is uh, it becomes or it is replaced by CH3. Okay, and in serine, it is CH2. They will be asking these structures, children, amino acid structures. You should be knowing it. Okay. It is called as, I mean, uh, it is replaced by CH2OH. Clear. Okay. 
So amino acids can be of three types. They can be acidic, basic and neutral. You should know some one or two examples under each of these categories, children. Acidic amino acids like glutamic acid, basic amino acids like lysine, neutral amino acids like valine. Okay, so these acidic or basic nature is obtained by the side chains which contain acidic or basic uh, side groups. Okay, that's why they attain acidic or basic or neutral properties. Clear? Okay, so some amino acids are also aromatic. What do you mean by aromatic children? They are having very sweet smell. I mean, uh, uh, smell. Okay, example, tyrosine. Phenylalanine and tryptophan. Tryptophan. Okay. These are, there are 20 types of amino acids and that is needed for protein synthesis. You know, I mean, a protein, what are proteins made up of? Proteins are made up of amino acids. And these, there are nearly 20 types of amino acids which are joined together to form different types of proteins in our body. So, there are only 20 types of amino acids, right? Okay, amino acids can also be classified as follows, which is essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. So, essential amino acids cannot be synthesized by the body and should be supplied by diet. Okay, and non-essential amino acids are the ones which can be synthesized by the body. By using all these, uh, 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 as uh, see, carbon, hydrogen, all those, they can join together to form these non-essential amino acids. Okay. Examples of essential amino acids are lysine, leucine, isoleucine, tryptophan, etc. An example of non-essential is glycine, alanine, serine, arginine, etc. Okay. You know not by heart all these things, children. Okay, some at least you should know 20 names you need not by heart. At least some you can know. Yeah. Children, another property of this amino acid is to is their existence in their ionizable nature. That is in different kinds of pH solutions, it exists in, in a ionic state which is called as a zwitter ionic form. Zwitter ionic form that is I, I'll write here it's not clear in this picture okay I can write here what is a CH R C O O H N H 2 N H 2 okay this is the amino acid okay right now this is I mean, it will gain a plus state. Okay. And CH COO minus. This one H is removed, thereby they attain a negative charge. COOH left. COOH is not there, so the uh, removal of one hydrogen. You get, you get a negative charge. Okay, the remaining things I am not writing. Okay, and H2 plus. Okay, and there is another R group, R group of course. Okay, and uh, there is, okay. So, all these are, say, so these are all reversible reactions. Reversible reactions. Okay, so this one is called as, this structure is called as Zwitter ionic form. Zwitter ionic form. And then the, immediately it will give rise to the original structure. CH, COOH, uh, R, H, and uh, NH2, all those things, right? Okay, so this is the Zwitter ionic state of the amino acid when in different kinds of pH solutions. Clear? So today we'll stop with this children. Next week uh, I'll uh, do the lipids and other mic macro or micromolecules for you. Clear?